Hi everyone and welcome to We Love Art. My name is Denise and today we're gonna recreate The Girl with Balloon by Banksy. Banksy is one of the most famous living artists in the world, if not the one. And yet, ironically, he managed to keep his identity a secret till this day, which is why he's often referred to as invisible and mysterious artist. He never appeared on television or on any photograph, and he's a complete stranger to any paparazzi. So, that makes us a lot to be curious about. I have still managed to find some amazing things about this wonderful artist, so let's get started. There's so much to know about Banksy. Through political and controversial works, with a hint of humor, Banksy continues to fascinate us. Banksy was born in Bristol, when he started, he was part of the Dry Breads crew, a Bristol-based gang where he learned how to do graffiti and street art. His work was mainly done freehand, and it's only until the late 90s that his use of stencils in his work developed. Nowadays, he still comes back to Bristol on a regular basis, and its inhabitants are never surprised. They find a new piece of art by Banksy on the corner of their street every now and then. He is truly a Bristol man at heart. Banksy took a lot of his inspiration from the work of a French street artist, Black Lequette, who is considered as one of the pioneers of street art. He owes him his use of stencils and his red-like character, now one of his emblems of his work. Banksy was known for his unique ideas. He printed a bunch of 10 pound notes and the queen was replaced by Princess Diana's face. And instead of Bank of England, the note read Banksy of England. In fact, till today, some of the copies of these notes can still be bought. One of Banksy's biggest hits was in collaboration with Damien Hirst, Keep It Spotless, sold at auction for 1.7 million pounds in February 2008, and thus setting a new kind of record for street art. Banksy has created variations of Girl with Balloon to address political issues. In 2014, he created a version featuring the girl wearing a headscarf to support victims of the Syria conflict. Photographs of Syrian children holding red balloons in the style of Banksy's famous Balloon Girl also went viral with the hashtag with Syria. The refugee version of Girl with Balloon was also projected on the Eiffel Tower. Two years later, the artist reworked the design and offered a free print to Bristol locals who voted against the Conservative government. Now, and did you know this? In 2013, in order to highlight that it's wrong that art markets sell artworks for an extremely high price, he hired someone to sell his artworks on the street. Each one of these was sold for $60, and the lucky people who bought one were absolutely sure it was fake because of the price. And so the next morning, Banksy published a video of the paintings actually being real, and they went viral. These artworks are now worth $20,000 at an auction. Now, I hope you feel inspired by the invisible and mysterious artist and that you're ready to step in Banksy's shoes and create your very own masterpiece. For this episode, you will need our We Love Art box, available on weloveart.com. In this box, you will find a pre-sketch canvas, seven colors of paint, even though we only need three colors today, three brushes, a big one for all the large areas, a medium one for all the blending, and a small one for all the little details. What you will need extra is a kitchen towel to dry your brushes, and a jar with water to rinse your brushes. Happy painting, everyone! Great, so we're gonna start in the first stage, which is the background. Now the background is just pure white, so it's actually really easy. Now, if you fancy to do something else, maybe you want to have another background color, you can always do this, but I'm gonna stay as close as possible to Banksy's work. So for this, I'm gonna take a big brush and I take the white as it is. I start here at the top of my canvas and apply the paint in long vertical strokes, just like this. Very, very easy. The reason why I still paint white and not just leave the canvas white is because I'll make sure then now that the canvas has the same texture throughout. Because if I would leave the canvas as it is, it will have a slightly different texture than the girl itself and the balloon itself. That's why I make sure that everything has paint. 
So in the big areas here, you can just have long strokes, really take it easy. It's like almost you're warming up for today. It's warming up those painting muscles. see I come close to the heart and what I want I still would like to see that outline so now I come close to the outlines here and I am NOT gonna switch to another brush if you feel more comfortable you of course can but I want to show you that we can keep the same big brush and how so the brush has a very flat top side and a very flat the side the side is very flat so with this you can Bring your brush very close to the outlines. Either touch it or stay slightly away from it. But here, I rather bring it slightly over the outlines. So then I know for sure everything is filled. Just like this. Beautiful. Beautiful. And here, then I'll bring the direction down again. And then I continue. Now here, I might just go over it, over the string. If you feel more comfortable to go slightly around the string, you can still like this, and you can still do it. But for me, I'd rather go over it and just create my own little string at the end. So this is it. But now here, at least we still know where the heart is gonna be later on. What I often do as well is that I continue to paint on the top and the sides and the bottom. Normally the effect is slightly bigger because normally you will see a color coming through here to the side. Now it's just gonna be white, but still, I would still say continue the color just on the sides and the top and the bottom, just so it looks nice and neat from every single angle. So now we come quite close here to the girl. Same as what we did with the heart. We're gonna go as close as possible to all the outlines. So again, I just keep for on the outside of the girl, my big brush. Later for the smaller details within the girl, because the girl also has some white parts, then I'm gonna go for either a medium or a small brush. But for now, for the outlines, I might as well use my big brush. And there's actually another reason for it. Because I have used my, my big brush throughout, if I will remain with the same big brush, it will give the same texture. Because otherwise you're gonna see with a very small brush, a very delicate little outline around her. And we actually just want to maintain the same feeling, the same flow throughout. But that's why having my same big brush actually will make it look extra nice. And this is in the end what we are going for.
go into all the little white areas which will remain white later on in her face, in her body. And then that's it. And we're good to go. We're good to go to the next color. Now it might look like I'm covering all the little outlines. I don't know if you can still see it on the camera, but I can still see some of the lines. So these are gonna help me later on with the black. So if you feel comfortable to do the same, just cover it as much as you feel good with, because this will give you just a little bit more freedom to just paint, to paint less details for now, because later in the black, there will be a lot of details to come. Banksy's Girl with Balloon, created in 2002 in London, is probably the most famous and most recognizable painting from this famous street artist. And a funny fact is that Justin Bieber himself, he made a tattoo on his arm and he made a picture, posted it on Instagram. And very quickly after, uh, Banksy shared this on his Facebook, only saying controversial. And since then, Justin Bieber quickly removed his Instagram post but still he has his tattoo on his arm. Well done. So now the white part, the white background is in, the white parts in the girl are filled. Now we're gonna make sure that it's dry before we go to the next stage, which is all the black parts within the girl. Okay, super, so the background is in. Now we're gonna move to the fun and exciting part, which is the girl. For this one, we require a little bit of a technique. And what we need to do, so we start off with a small brush. So use a small brush. Then we're gonna take the black, Dilute the black, dilute the, um, the black with a little bit of water, just like this. And the reason why we do this is then becomes, the black becomes a little bit more smooth rather than just the thick black itself. So the smooth application will help later to create nice lines. So you roll the brush here in the paint so all the paint sits towards the front of the bristles. The way you're gonna hold the brush is very important. You hold it very close to the bristles. So instead of holding it here, you're gonna hold it here. In the exact same way as you would hold maybe a pencil or a pen when you're gonna write your name. And then the other tip, what is really important as well, is that you need to rest the palm of your hand. So we're gonna lean into the canvas, to rest, and this is why you want to have the background dry. So rest the palm of your hand and then just go. And you see? You can make really thin lines by just doing this. And the fact that we diluted the paint a little bit has helped to make very nice and smooth lines because otherwise you will see pixelation. But I'll show you this as well. So you're gonna start here with the outlines a bit first. All the hair. You see now my brush is slowly drying. I don't know if you can see it, but here the pixelation is forming. So do you see this, huh? So that's the dryness, for example. So that means we just need to repeat the process again. So we dilute the paint with a little bit of water, roll the brush so everything comes to the front of the bristles, so all the paint sits there. Lean in, hold the brush close to the bristles, and then you go again. As that. With just a few tricks, you can really become that master in just one day.
Okay, great. So now the face is almost in, but what you will see is that here in his jawline, we need a little bit of a kind of gray glow. So we need to make a soft transition. How I'm going to do that? I take a medium brush like this, and I'm going to blend here on my palette already a little bit of gray. And let's see. So softly, I'm gonna add that in and try to get the two areas here softly mixed. So there is a nice, soft and smooth transition between the black and the gray. And how we do this is with the wet on wet technique. So the black is still wet and now we add the gray, which is then also still wet. And we softly stroke in between the two wet areas and you see, you get a very soft gradient. Now, towards the edges, I am gonna use again my small brush because it's a little bit too delicate for me to handle it with a medium brush. So I use a small brush, might even add some water, and then we add those delicate lines here. Very nice. And because of this technique, this wet on wet technique, you can't really see where one color starts and the other color ends. So it is a very soft transition. So you see here, you have the black, then it goes very smoothly over onto a more of a gray area. And that is what you can achieve with the wet on wet technique. And it's a beautiful way. So now we're gonna move on again towards her clothes and we use the exact same way. So we're gonna go to the black, hold the brush close to the bristles and just bring the black down. Super simple.
artwork, what we are creating today, represents hope. It depicts a young girl whose hair and dress are blowing in the wind, reaching for or releasing a red heart-shaped balloon. And this gesture and the, and the heart-shaped balloon both represent childhood and freedom. Now, and whether you see the girl as losing the red balloon or just about to catch it, its meaning can be interpreted as either the loss of innocence or the arrival of new hope. Isn't that just so beautiful? done really good job so far and your girl it looks probably very good and i hope you're very proud of it so far so now we have one more thing here to do which are those shoes and they're a little bit or the feet they're a little bit in a funny funny way so what we are going to do the same as what we did for the jaw you remember how you got like the transition with the wet on wet technique maybe you still remember now we're going to do the same so i'm going to create a slightly lighter gray so just uh, black and white a little bit of water and then we're gonna create those feet and, and feet and it's literally just almost like a little scribble it doesn't i mean it's not really something you see so it's like a little scribble of those feet kind of going into nothing. Yeah, just this. Now I'm gonna introduce a little bit of black again. Here to make this transition a bit better. Now don't ask me what this exactly is. Are these two feet, one? One, I, you can't really see it. It's not 100% clear. We just follow what he did as good as we can. I'm 
gonna extend it a little bit more here at the bottom. done now is I, I made a very light towards the bottom so it almost transitions towards the background of the of the canvas which is white so I just made a very light towards the bottom and then that's it so there's not much definition to those feet or to those shoes okay so the last thing what I'm gonna do and maybe you don't need to but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out the thumb a little bit more so I want to just add a little bit more thumb here and I'm gonna look at those hands again so if you have any area where you're like oh I don't really know if this looks good super easy fix wait until it's dry then do with the white whatever you wanted to do with the white and then if you still need to cover it up with the black to follow a certain shape you can do this it's really important to know that whenever you're maybe unsure about a certain an area and you filled it in the way you thought it should have been and you didn't really like it so much at the end no problem wait until it's dry correct it and all is good to go here i will show you what i had maybe you had the same problem and then we can move on really really good job so far Well done so far on this beautiful little girl. Now we're gonna move on to the red balloon. Great, so your girl is in and I'm sure it looks amazing. Now we're gonna go to the final part already of this painting. So we're gonna make the red balloon. If you want to have the balloon in any other color, you can definitely do so. I'm gonna stick to red. Simply what we do, we take the red with a medium brush. I go for medium just apply it here onto the compass just like this very nice towards the edges either use a small brush or very softly try to create a nice smooth line you see you can do this with this brush today we're going to create or i'm creating a red balloon but did you know that he made also versions of a pink balloon, a purple balloon, and a golden balloon. And actually the golden balloon was sold in 2021, so this year, for a little more than one million pounds. How incredible is that?
excellent. So the red heart is in or any balloon color you've given it. Now we're just gonna make the simple string, the black string. We use a small brush for this. And again, similar as to what we've done with the girl, we add a little bit of water, we to dilute the paint, then we roll the brush into the paint, hold it close to the bristles and off we go. So the string comes from here, that's it. And it goes slightly thicker and then a bit thinner. So I'm going to attach this string here and we also still have a bit left here. So we've added now the black string and now what we will do still is add a tiny bit of red here. So there's a little bit here above the string. So there, just a small detail. And then the final part of this balloon is this kind of white highlight here at the two top corners. How we're gonna do this? If your balloon is dry like mine, then we are gonna just dilute the white paint with a little bit of water and softly add it in. If your heart is not dry yet, then you just take the white as it is and just softly try to blend it the same way as you've done with the wet on wet technique. Softly try to blend it that way. If it is dry, like me, then you just dilute it with some water. So here, get rid of this one. Yeah. And then we softly start here at the corners. center I want the white to appear a little bit stronger later on so then I am not going to use too much water I just apply the paint as is on the heart so here I didn't dilute it with any water to do this a couple of more times to just give it some extra layers of paint so that the white will appear as vivid as possible. In the meantime, I am already gonna go to the other half of the heart. painting is not only famous for the image as we know it, it's also really famous as to what happened to this painting. So in 2018, only seconds after this painting was sold at an auction in London, the painting was shredded to pieces. And how does it happen? Banksy, he actually hit inside the frame a shredder and the second the gavel fell, the painting was shredded into all little pieces. So the buyer before the shredding still decided to still buy the painting. And so he paid 1.4 million pounds for it. And he named it Love is in the Bin. How crazy is the world of art?
Well done! I hope you are super happy with your masterpiece you created today. I love mine, I hope you love yours and that it deserves a nice spot somewhere on your wall. Now if you enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon again. Bye!